All right, 4.1 extreme values of function. So we're applying uh, a derivative. One of the uses of uh, calculus is we can find extreme values much easier than uh, algebra can. So if we had a rectangle that has uh, dimensions, let's say it's 2x by negative x plus 5. Um, if we want to find the maximum area, Uh, a rectangle defined this way. You could do this with algebra. Um, either way, we have to find area written as a function, so it would be base times height, so 2x times negative x plus 5, so a of x equals negative 2x squared plus 10x. So in algebra, we would graph this. It's a parabola. It's an inverted parabola. We'd, we'd want to find, you know, the, the vertex. So we could do that by finding the average of the two x-intercepts, and that's the x-value, and plug it in, you get the y-value of the vertex, or you could complete the square. Um, there's lots of ways we could find the vertex um, using algebra, but in calculus, it's when the slope is zero. So we can just find the derivative, and find when that is zero, so you could just set it equal to zero, and that's it's easier than doing the algebra. So x is 2.5, so the maximum area would be 2 times 2.5 times negative 2.5 plus 5. So what's that? 5 times 2.5? What's that, 7.5? No, more than that. So if I plug 2.5 in times 2, so that's 5 times 2.5 gives you 12.5. So the maximum area of that rectangle is 12.5 units squared. Okay, you could not make a, a more, you could not get more area uh, the way it's defined. So extreme values, we found an extreme value that's a maximum here. Generally, to find extreme values, I've got it broken into four steps here. You have to find the derivative, set the derivative equal to zero, and that's what we did in this problem up here. We found the derivative, set it equal to zero, and that will give you where you have horizontal tangents. <coughs> and horizontal tangents aren't always maximums or minimums. Um, they could be like this, where it's horizontal, but in most most cases, it's going to produce either a maximum or a minimum. Um, so that'll be the first two steps. Number three is find where it's undefined. Um, you could also have a min or a max in an undefined location of the derivative. It, um, so it might be a cusp or a corner, um, and those produce mins and maxes. So extrema are mins and maxes. And then if the domain is restricted, you would check the endpoints also. So um, what I mean by that is if we have a parabola, let's just say it's um, y equals x squared, and but we're only going to go from negative 2 to 2. Okay, so y equals x squared has a horizontal tangent right here, so that's our minimum. We could find that by finding the derivative set equal to 0, so x equals 0. Okay, so we have a horizontal. But since the domain in this problem, they would say from negative 2 to 2, you would check the endpoints, and those also produce extrema. They both happen to be the absolute maximum, um, which is 4. So you'd say the maximum is 4 at x equals plus or minus 2. So if the domain is restricted, those also produce extrema. All right, so back to the four steps. I've got a little sketch down here. Um, find when the derivative is 0. So of these four letters, where is the derivative zero? 
Well, the derivative is zero where we have a horizontal tangent. So there's only ones right there. So that's at C. <coughs> um, where is the derivative undefined? Well, that's right here at B because we have a, a corner at B. So you could also have extrema where it's undefined. Check endpoints. So we do have endpoints at A and D that also produce um, extrema. So A, you'd call this a local max. It's not the absolute max because there are points higher than it, but locally around here, it's a maximum because all points around it are all less than it. Um, local max is the same as relative max. I don't know, I don't remember what this book calls it, if it's a local or a relative max. Um, this at B looks like it is the absolute max or absolute min um, because it's the lowest point the graph ever gets to. Now it is considered a local min but it's specifically it's the absolute min so all mins and maxes are all local but some local mins and maxes are absolute. Now the book um, they kind of are lazy with it and interchange local mins and maxes with absolute mins and maxes. Just remember that all mins and maxes are local, but some of them happen to be absolute. So this right here looks like the absolute max, uh, which is also a local max. And this one looks like a local min. All right, so let's try a tougher example. And then the little rectangle. So let's try um, y equals x to the two thirds times x plus two. All right. So we're going to find the derivative. Step one: find the derivative. Product rule: x to the two thirds times one plus uh, x plus 2 times the derivative of x to the 2 thirds, which is 2 thirds, x to the negative 1 third. Alright, it's 2x plus 2 over cube root of x. There's our derivative. Um, oh, we have a 3 down there too. Okay, so now we can set that equal to zero. And I don't move one of them over, so. I don't know if I should leave that as x to the one third or cube root of x. Maybe I'll leave it as x to one third. Go back to the x to one third. So I'm going to multiply by three x to the one third. So on the left side I have negative three x to the two thirds times one third. You add the exponent, so it's just x. So x equals negative four fifths. So what we found is that we have a horizontal tangent at x equals negative four fifths. It might be a min or it might be a maximum. Uh, it's possible it's something called an inflection point there, not very probable. So x to the negative four fifths is our first critical point. Critical points produce mins and maxes. Okay, so now back to our, we did the derivative, set it equal to zero and solved. Now we have to find where it's undefined, specifically what makes the bottom zero. It's gonna be undefined in more places than that, but what makes the bottom zero is what we're looking for. So do we have any fractions in our derivative? Yes, we do. Okay, so right there, if x is zero, that makes the bottom zero. So x equals zero makes the bottom zero. So something might happen at zero also. Okay, so uh, it's undefined at that point. So, so right now in 
uh, 4.1 we have done everything we need to analytically uh, later on in the chapter we are not going to be using our calculators but for right now uh, we're going to use our calculators to kind of look at what's happening at negative four fifths and what's happening at zero All right, so we do have our horizontal tangent. That's what we got when we did negative four fifths right here. And that's right there at negative four fifths. And something happens at zero, it's undefined at zero. Yes, that produces another extrema. Um, so let's answer the question. If we're gonna, I didn't even say what we're trying to find. So basically find the extrema and label them streama and label them as mins and max so at negative four fifths that is a local max um, and we can calculate value of negative four fifths and I get 1.03 okay so a local max at negative four fifths comma 1.03 nothing like going from fraction and decimal in the same problem and then um, we have a local min at zero so calculate value when x is zero we get zero zero so that looks like a local minimum at zero zero all right so the only thing I would say in this problem is I I prefer that you tell me that the maximum is equal to 1.03 at x equals negative 4 fifths. Because if I ask you what's the maximum, the maximum is not an ordered pair. The maximum is always the y value of the ordered pair. Like if I throw a football in the air and it goes up like this, and I ask you, if it goes 10 comma 40 right there. If I ask you how high did it go, you wouldn't tell me it went 10 comma 40, you would say it went 40 feet high. So the maximum is 40 at 10. So the maximum here is 1.03 at x equals negative 4 fifths. So the same thing here, we'd say the minimum is zero at x equals zero. All right. Um, Yeah, I think that's probably enough.